of the people who watch us from other places to, hey, Susan, come in, what's up? <laughs> uh, even, even friends who used to go here and moved away. Uh, so sometimes they show up randomly holding kids. <laughs> Good to see you. Just a uh, uh, last week I went a little fast uh, because of four shots of espresso. So I had four shots again this morning, but I'm going to try, I'm going to, try to keep the pace down to, to something manageable. Uh, because we're wrapping up our summer journey. We've been doing this series called The Summer Road Trip. And uh, if, if you're newer here, or you know, maybe you don't know, maybe just, we kind of go through books of the Bible, big chunks of scripture. Sometimes we'll do a thematic thing or the holidays and things. But generally, we were in the scripture. And so we took a, we've been in the book of Mark uh, for a while because I really like the book of Mark, one of my favorite four gospels. See, I say that horrible joke all the time, but it's to teach you that there's four gospels. And you're like, oh, I remember that joke I always told them so bad. Anyway, uh, so all my bad jokes have heard this. And so we, we, we kind of, we've taken this detour and summer road trip. And summer road trips are fun because you go different places and different things. And sometimes I, I hit an area and I'm like, yeah, that'd be a whole other sermon. Uh, and you hear me say that, don't worry, I'm not going to preach that sermon now. But uh, So we took some of those and we're doing sort of a summer series with them. And uh, this one was interesting because it kind of came up. It wasn't on the original plan because you know some of them get moved around and, and pushed together and things so we're working on things and people were kind of going, hey, you always said this is another sermon and you never said anything again about it. So we've been doing some of those. And so this one, uh, this one is kind of I was doing, I we were preparing for communion sort of towards the beginning of the series, and I mentioned something, and I said something about there's actually four cups in the Passover meal. There's four times that you know uh, the cup's taken, and people were all looking at me like, what? What is he, what is he talking about? Anyone remember about almost four years ago doing a series on the four cups? Be honest. Okay. Good, because, you know, well, you're not going to do any sermons. It's a repeat. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, I took four weeks a few years ago to do this, and so this sermon is about four hours long. Uh, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, about three, and I actually, it was, it was one of the series, I stumbled upon, upon the series, I like, I'm a little ADD, um, as some of you know, and so like I have to, like if I'm painting a room or something, or in here, I either need to be talking to someone, or have something on to occupy my mind so that I can keep on task, and, and whenever I'm like doing something that's like busy work, I have to have, so a lot of times I, I listen to random sermons, different things, and I stumbled upon this one, it was four cups. And I was like, four cups? What do you mean there's four? I just, I, you know, and, and so I've never kind of gone through the Passover Seder. I keep thinking that would be something good for us to do, but I need to think of it before, like the week before Passover. And I'm like, oh, I should probably have somebody come down. Uh, <laughs> and, and so uh, I, I mentioned the fact that there's four cups. And so that's where every, every week I've done a different t shirt. And so, uh, you know, my friend kind of made this one. I'm already sweating, though. Man, it's hot here. <laughs> Maybe the cups are leaking. <laughs> it's four cups. Now, some of you are thinking four shots of espresso, and Jeff's going again. <laughs> I think you'll have, you'll have to have the six cups here. Well, first, we did, like, goblets, because it looked more like biblical, like communion. But then it just looked like I was an alcoholic. <laughs> You know, in one version of it looked like shot glasses, so we decided with coffee cups. You know, we all like coffee here, except when you have a couple of us drink tea, that's okay, we love you too. Uh, diversity. Uh, and, and so, we talked about this thing called Passover. Now, our whole premise, last week we talked about what it is to, to read the Bible in a Jesus-centric way. Meaning, you know, Jesus makes things clearer. Because if, if, if you read the entire Bible, most of it is in Hebrew. Uh, you know, it's what we call the Old Testament, the First Testament. I, I often call it the Hebrew Bible. So I think sometimes we call it the Old Testament. It sounds like it's not relevant. Uh, and, and then we interpret everything sort of in the light of Jesus coming. And so Jesus makes a lot of things clearer that weren't as, as clear uh, maybe before. And, and so there's this festival called Passover. Now, if you know the story, great. <laughs> if you don't, here's a little bit. Uh, basically, there's, if you've seen Prince of Egypt, the animated story, it's that. <laughs> it, it, it's, this, it's this series of, pl 
plagues and things that happen as God's people Israel, God's people are there for like 400 years. That's a long time. And, and, you, know, and you know, there's times where you're going through things and it takes a while. Like yesterday, we were, we were cutting a tree down uh, at, at Bob's house. It was, you know, we were cutting the tree. I was cutting the tree. I told Bob to cut the tree. And I think I cut for a long time before anything happened. You're like, what is going on? But then when I hit that strap at the back, boom, the engine went quickly, and then you got kind of quickly running because I had to pull a rope. Because we were trying to drop it between the house and phone fo wires, and we did it. Yes. <coughs> I <don't see> that. <laughs> uh, and so, you know, it, things take a while sometimes. So it's this whole, it's 400 years that the people are in slavery. God shows up and he's redeeming his people. He brings them then out and they, they're to celebrate this meal called Passover because the angel of death passed over them. Uh, you know, that's, that would be a whole, maybe someday we'll do a series on Exodus. There's some cool stories in there. Uh, but, you know, it, it's this, this festival and like there's, there's a, a lamb that's slaughtered and it's, it's bloody and stinky. The Samaritans, we'll talk about the Samaritans, they actually, there's not many of them left, but they still celebrate it. So, I, you know, kind of bucket list, I would like to go watch Passover <laughs> as celebrated, uh, much like it would have been a long time ago, uh, because there's, there's no temple, the Jewish people don't do it right now. Uh, uh, and, and so, you know, and, and in that, there were, there were four cups given uh, that, that during the actual ceremony. Uh, and, and so it comes out of this passage in Exodus, where the people came out and says this, Therefore say to the Israelites, I am the Lord, I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. I will free you from being slaves to them, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and mighty acts of judgment. I will take you as my own people, and I will be your God. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God who brought you out from the yoke of the Egyptians. That's, that's an NIV. I, I, think it, I, should, I think I put an NLT here. Oops. Uh, <laughs> I can play the sound guy, though. So you see, you know, always the sound guy. Uh, anyway. Uh, and so then, you know, you know, there are these four promises. I will. I will bring you out. I will free you. I will redeem you. I will take you as my own people. And, and so that's the, the four cups each develop sort of out of that. And, and so there are these four promises within that. Uh, now, in the Passover ceremony, again, I, this is all stuff I read. I've never gotten to, to go through one. There's this, there's this blessing say, said over each. Uh, the first of the four cups of wine, uh, you know, the folks wash their hands, they're, and the middle, there's this, like, matzah, which is, like, unleavened bread, and some of you've seen it at the grocery store, uh, that kind of thing. It's broken in two, uh, and then perhaps they get off the meal. And this Passover story is told. Uh, and, and again, Easter, the, what we celebrate in the Christian church, this, this holiday of Easter, it is generally, because depending on which calendar you're following, Passover kind of, like, is... Because, you know, it doesn't always, they line up. But originally they lined up. And, and because Jesus, the Last Supper is this Passover meal that, that he does with his disciples. And, and, and so, and again, Jesus is the fulfillment of all this. So, uh, here's, a, here's like a, one of the premises. You know, just like the Jewish people in Egypt, God wants you to enjoy freedom, but often we end up in slavery. We end up being bound by stuff. And so in John chapter 8, uh, Jesus says, as he said, the people believe, they believe in it. You are truly my disciples if you remain faithful in my teachings, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. But we are the of Abraham, they said, you've never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean you will all be set free? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave of sin. A slave is not a permanent member of family, but a son is part of the family forever. So if the son sets you free, you are truly free. Uh, the message says, John 8, 34, this way. I tell you solemnly that anyone who chooses the life of sin is trapped in a dead-end life and is, in fact, a slave. And often in life, we, we you know, we, we choose to do certain things, and then we find ourselves in slavery to it. Because uh, it's, it, it's just kind of, it sucks. It gets, and I, I used the analogy, I used to work in a factory making, uh, like, the walls of plastic that you put out in the fields and things, and... Uh, you know, and, and I work there, and low man on the totem pole, and if you've ever been there, you get the dirty, nasty job. And at one time, the guy who ran the line, I'd love to find him again somehow. <laughs> but one night, he put me back there, and like, we're cleaning out the extruders and all this molten plastic. He's like, just cut it off like this and kick it off to the side. But at, at some point, it got stuck on my foot, and I'm trying to kick it away. And next thing you know, I'm like stuck in a giant molten thing of plastic. And my, it burned, no, 
on. <laughs> I had to like, unlace my boots, jump out, and run barefoot into the break room and go, uh, I need your help. <laughs> because it, it, it's stuff that we think we can put into our lives that, that God doesn't want in our lives. We often it gets stuck to us. And, and, and things that we think we have mastery and control over that then become a problem for us because we often think we know better than God, right? If we're honest. Because, you know, sometimes we look at the Bible and we're like, oh, well, you can't do this and that. Well, maybe I'll just sneak it on the side, or it's okay. I'm, you know, we always go, oh, but I'm forgiven. <laughs> and so we, we sort of sneak stuff in because we think it's, you know, it'll work, but it's not good for us. I, I often say, you know, like if you're running low on oil in your car, what do you do? You put oil in it. Why? Why don't you put maple syrup? If you're in New England, there's lots of it there. <laughs> uh, it's not designed for that. It's a, the Bible has limitations on our behaviors and actions, not because God wants us to not have fun, but he, but he knows what's best. But we often, you know, and we, we'll, we'll take good things too, and we'll think about a context. Uh, you know, you know, <laughs> uh, it, 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 you know, money is not a bad thing. You know, the Bible says the love of money is your value, but not money is your Money is not a bad thing, but if you put all your value and trust in money, eventually you become a slave to it. Yeah, you, and often you become a slave to your job because you, hey, I, I don't know how many people I know. I mean, you do have to at some point make a living. Don't get me wrong. But there's so many people I know who absolutely hate their job when it makes good money <laughs> and they really like money. Uh, and, and, you know, and often we find ourselves enslaved. You know, we value money and we find ourselves enslaved to money, to greed, to debt. Because uh, you can love money and not have any and just blow it all. Because that's America. This is America. America. <laughs> we can do good with debt for anything. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, if you don't watch it, then it's, it's, once you get a credit card, it's just easy to like, rack it up. Like, how, how much is this for the fucking How many of I have? Um, but, it, 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 you, know, it, it, you know, relationships, good thing, right? God gave us relationships. I do weddings, I do it when you're sick. And you know, talk about the fact that, that, that relationships are a good thing that God created for us. But when we put all our faith and trust in them, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, we put our self-worth in, you know, our boyfriend, or girlfriend, or wife, or husband, uh, you know, these things that should be part of giving us a fuller life, then become something we're a slave to. Uh, and then we put ourselves in slave to guilt, fear, anger, hate, bitterness, schedule, bad habits, and ultimately, all this stuff is not the life that God wants us to lead. I constantly quote you, if you want to know by now, John Penn Penn. I come in and my life and have it to full, have it abundantly, depending on your translation. Uh, you know, we're called to this better, this different kind of life. And so God's wanting us to live free, free of all this stuff. Again, we, we can put ourselves back in slavery. We, we, we pull these things back in our lives. Now, for me, you know, I often, I gave my life before I became a follower of Jesus to a lot of things. You know, I, I, you know, uh, sports, man. Like, I don't know, there's something about sports when I was a teen, man. I was all, I was all about football. I was all about wrestling. Uh, not so much track. We just did that because there was something to do with the spring. We got the lift. Uh, we got the pickings off the pooping foul. <laughs> uh, you know, but it's, you know, you know, and then, uh, you know, for a while, we were on academics. I know some people are like, I don't think you're that smart, Jeff. <laughs> you know, you don't have to be smart school to do that. But, you know, it's like, you know, I kind of judge my, you know, my, my worth in my academics. And it's always fun being a, a larger academic person because everyone assumes you're dumb if you can literally pick things up and put things down. So it's kind of fun to be like, no, I'm actually not as dumb as you think I am. Uh, <laughs> maybe dumber. Uh, <laughs> but, but you know, you know, ultimately, you just think, I succeed in a lot of that stuff, but didn't find contentment. Because you only really find freedom and contentment in Christ. Uh, they, they've said, it's been said, the two greatest days in your life are one, the day when you're born. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, 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 you know, that's an important day. Because if you weren't born, you weren't born. <laughs> there's, there's logic there. Uh, and actually, it's, it's you know, Diane's birthday, so happy birthday, Diane. <laughs> uh, happy birthday to you. Uh, so, uh, you know, and that's we celebrate birthdays because they're they're they're, they're kind of exciting. It's, you know, but you know, two is the second day is when you find out your purpose. And, and I think sometimes it's, it's sometimes it's easy to find for some of us. Sometimes it's, a, it's a sort of a journey. But when you find out the things that God's created you to do, it's it, it, it's like it changes the way you look at life. Now I love I don't have them anymore because you know, dogs die. But 
I had the best, and some of you knew him. Uh, Chewy, yeah, see? <gasps> and he was like the best giant chocolate lab. He was abnormally large. <laughs> uh, and he just loved, I mean, like, again, we have a tree farm, we have to work in. You have people, like, if you like looking for the dog, you can't find him, he's just sitting in the water. His head out. It looks like just a beaver. He would just sit in the bottom of the lake and he loved to be in there. We'd be out there, it's like freezing cold. We're, you know, frozen to death nearly. And we're out there playing fetch with him. People are like, I can't believe you put him in the water. I'm like, no, that's what he's born to do. That's what he would break through the ice to get in, to get in. And he was just so happy when he was there because that's what he was bred to do. That's what he was made to do. And when you find the things that God's created you to do, it's exciting. You know, people often, I, I, I had a conversation with someone last week too. Uh, we're talking about you know, school, because you know, most of you know I love academic stuff. Um, I just told you earlier too. <laughs> but, but you know, school, on the one hand, you know, high school is harder, I think, than college in some ways. I mean, the pace of college, because you, you have to study so much. And college is hard. But even the further you go up in the academic world, I think the easier school becomes. Because you're focusing on things you like to do and you want to learn. <laughs> and you're focusing on the things that God has made you to do. And so, uh, you know, chewing. <laughs> he's happy, he's bred to be that way. Uh, you know, I'm halfway through Chariots of Fire, I, you know. <laughs> every time I mention a movie here, I'm like, I don't need to go get that at the library. It's a long movie. Oh my gosh, I don't have that kind of attention span. <laughs> uh, I still haven't watched Pinocchio. <laughs> we had a conversation during the Wednesday night Bible study last spring, and I'm like, people are talking about stuff in Pinocchio. I'm like, that's a Pinocchio? What are you talking about? <laughs> Apparently, I've never seen the full Pinocchio. I mean, Pinocchio has this crazy life, I guess. Yeah. I had no idea. We, did he see we got it for me from the library? I just I didn't sit down and watch Pinocchio. Sorry. I, I, will, get, I will get to Pinocchio. Uh, that reminds me, I've already moved to YouTube. Having touched it, but you know, Charity Fire. That was, I was like, what was the point there? You know, uh, you know, he he just he feels God's pleasure when he runs, and so he, you know, when he, when he when he's running and he looks crazy in the movie, he's like, <laughs> but he's happy. You know, he, he, and when you find the things that God's given you to do, it's exciting. It, it, it's fun. Now, we, we'll find freedom when we understand God's purpose for our life. We'll find freedom when we understand, you know, why Jesus came. Jesus, in Matthew 11, 1 says, When Jesus had finished giving these instructions to his 12 disciples, he went down to teach and preach in the town throughout the region. John the Baptist in prison heard about all the things the Messiah was doing. He said, this letter to ask Jesus, are you the Messiah we're expecting? Or should we keep looking for someone else? <laughs> and John's funny. It's like, on one hand, he's like, hey, you're, you're Jesus, you're the Messiah. And he's like, are you the one? Because <laughs> he's getting... Uh, um, locked up, and you know when you're in prison, he's like, wait a minute, you know, or, Jesus, are you, are you the one? He's kind of this little moment of doubt, which is interesting to me. <laughs> Jesus told him, go back, John, tell me you've heard. See, the blind see the lame walk, the weapon appear, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the light of the good news be preached for, tell him God blesses those who do not turn away because of me. But, you know, Jesus' purpose is he proclaims freedom. Uh, now in Exodus. We see this, this physical freedom from slavery because God's people in Egypt come out of Egypt and they, they have this freedom. Uh, now, <laughs> it's in Jesus, he comes and he's proclaiming freedom and he, he's demonstrating that by healing the sick. He, you know, he heals people, show, hey, there's, there's this freedom. And, and, and you know, uh, in Matthew 11, further down, 28 says, Come to me, all you who are weary, carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Uh, weary and carry heaven, heavy burdens. Uh, because religious people tend to make up extra rules and all kinds of stuff. Uh, I offend a lot of people, but deep down inside, I don't care. Uh, because sometimes what I have, <laughs> if I offend you because of the gospel, sorry. But if I, if I offend you because I'm not particularly religious about certain things, you know, it, 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 we make up all kinds of rules that aren't really in the Bible. And so, you know, there's sometimes there's some religious folks who don't, you know, kind of agree with me. You know, I, I offended somebody one time because I preached in jeans. I don't like it. Yeah, I know. Someone was like, are you allowed to preach in jeans? I'm like, I, uh, I was wearing pants. I mean, <laughs> like, can we thank you for okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, 
you don't even want shorts, trust me. My, my legs look like I lost a fight with a weed wax. I like to go mountain biking and things, and I never wear long pants. Uh, which is, <laughs> why am I very smart up? Anyway, uh, <laughs> we got way off topic. Uh, you know, you know, weary and, and, and carry heavy burdens. Uh, you know, take my yoke upon you. Uh, you know, yoke. Now here's the thing. It, it, it's it, it's 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 this way of living. This this, this way of uh, you know, a yoke was a. Uh, like his teaching, and there still is a yoke, but there's a way of living. Because sometimes I think when we say, you know, the made-up religious rules of people, and, and I'm very much against that, you know, like, uh, you know, I didn't, like, I, it's like, I remember right, when I came to faith, people were like, oh, you can't dance. I'm like, you're right, I can't. They're like, no, you're not supposed to. I'm like, I don't want to. <laughs> now, there's certain dancing that you don't want to do, but I had a friend who, like, you know, she got re-saved, I don't know, and then she had to give up ballroom dancing. Uh, now, I'm, there's nothing more simple than a waltz. I mean, I, I, I'm fine with giving up dancing because I got two left feet or two right feet. I don't know. I, just, I can't dance. <laughs> but you know, there's really no nothing in the Bible that says you, you you can't dance. But people make up that kind of stuff. But there is ways of behavior and living that we, that we should have. So I'm not against all rules, just the ones we kind of make up. You know, the ones like, you know, we're just like, oh, well, what Jesus really meant was, and we had all kinds of stuff. Uh, now, <coughs> you know, <laughs> there, there, there's, there's this, you know, so Passover, sanctification, it, 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 the idea is this, is it salvation, God brings them out of Egypt, we're brought out of sin, given new life, second cup, deliverance, and, and the idea is freedom, you don't have to live like a slave anymore. Uh, now, uh, I was thinking, we, we talked about this passage recently, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell it. In, in Mark chapter 2, there's this uh, there's a crazy scene, and I actually, I remember when I was preaching, I was like, if we didn't have such a cool ceiling in this building, I would, if this had just been drywall, I was actually going to have somebody bust a hole in the, in the ceiling while you know, I was preaching and lower somebody down, because that would be cool. But Because that's really what happens, you know, there's four guys, there's four their friends paralyzed, and I always wondered, friend, really want to get lowered or not? Jesus is teaching, they can't get in the house, they tear a hole in the ceiling, they lower him down, <laughs> you know, and he, 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 maybe he wanted to be there, maybe he didn't. And so, people are like, guys, what are you doing? You know, I picture Bunchy too, which is the nearest to let him down. But, you know, they lower him down, Jesus is looking at him, everybody's a good guy, right? And, and you know, and Jesus, you know, looks at him and goes, hey, your sins are forgiven. And he's like, well, that's not really my thing, thanks. Uh, you know, and that's kind of what he's thinking. And the teacher of the law there, like, oh, you know, what's he saying? He's been blasphemy, only God forgives sins. And Jesus, Jesus says this. So why do you question this in your heart? Is it easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or stand up, pick up your mat, and walk? Which is easier? I think it's easier to say your sins are forgiven, because you can't really tell. There's no, like, sinometer. <laughs> Oh, look, his sonometer is down zero. They are uh, you know, or stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. He said, I'll prove you, son of man, so you can get in. And then he just turned to the and said, stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. And, and he does so. You know, it, 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 Jesus is showing something. He said, hey, I had this power over sin. Now, here's the thing. What if, and, and you never see this in the gospel, no one's ever like, no, thank you, Jesus. I'm going to stay where I am. Like I, I, I prefer my I prefer my, my paralysis. You know, the blind men are like, oh Lord, I, thanks for the sight, take it back away. <laughs> you know? Uh, but because people it would be foolish, it would seem crazy. Uh, but here's the thing. A lot of us a lot of times we have this this offer of freedom, this offer of new life, and we go back to the old. Uh, you know, I, I was looking over my old notes for this and I was I saw the the Cray posted something. Remember Facebook? Okay, right. <laughs> I was reading the curriculum this week, and this guy was making this point. He's like, you just didn't have a MySpace page. And I'm like, no one has a MySpace page. <laughs> like, it's just funny. In like, a few years, your social media could totally change. It's like, anyway, uh, <laughs> my kids keep telling me only the old folks are on you know, Facebook, but it is what it is. I'm there. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, but Lecrae, Lecrae said this is one of my, my favorite. Uh, this is, that's another thing, like another rule. Christian, like, like, oh, you can't have Christian rap. Yes, you can. It's really good, too. Look, right. Uh, check it out if you don't know. 
Um, in fact, the Dover native, you know, did some of the production work, so shout out. Um, uh, anyway, <laughs> just, the grace of this, just because you choose your master doesn't mean you're not a slave. <laughs> and, and a lot of times we're slave to stuff that we pull into our lives that, that God doesn't have for us. But, but it, it, you know, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, Jesus said, uh, you know, if you hold my teaching, you are a disciple, then you the truth, and the truth will set you free. You know, so if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. <laughs> if you're free, don't live like a slave. Now, some of you are getting married, some of you are married, you know, some of you are married. <laughs> like, here's the thing. Uh, after you get married, what do you want to do? Well, the... <laughs> 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 it's not like it's a surprise to God. He invented that too. <laughs> but I mean, you want to move in together, right? You want to, you want to live together. I'm not going to... Sometimes I have to do I'm saying a little too. But you know, if you got married, and then, like, lived on the opposite coast and only got together in the holidays. That would be weird. Because you want to live together. That's part of the fun of being married. It's like all the fights you have, and, like, intense fellowship is what we might call it. Uh, anyway. Hey, anyway, there's. <laughs> you know, and then it, it would be like. If, okay, I'm not saying play the lottery. I don't know where I come out. No, I'm not gonna, That'd be a whole other sermon that I don't even want to preach right now. But, <laughs> you know, let's say you won the lot. Someone gave you a ticket. We'll take all the moral dilemmas out of it. Of, you know, I, I always think of lottery as a tax on people with more math skills. Um, <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> some of you work for the lottery. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, but, that awkward moment of memory when you're up here. And, and so, if you won the lottery and you went back to a job you hate, that's sad, right? Like, you would, like people don't win the lottery and then go back to work like, I hate my job, hate my boss, I'm going to live here and work here. No, you go like, hey, you take my money and, you know, it better run. I'm going to, you know, buy the company, fire my boss, you know, all kinds of stuff. Because the point is to live differently because you have this freedom, right? Uh, it, it'd be like the Israelites come out of Egypt. Go out in the desert. They're there for 40 years because, you know, most of them ask directions. No. <laughs> a, we'll do a whole series of maybe three exits one day. Uh, but, you know, they're out there. If they were still making bricks out there, that wouldn't be it. it because you live differently because of who you are. I mean, God's redeeming them. And, you know, he, he's, he's bringing them out, you know, and he will free you. It almost seems redundant, you know. Like, the first two cups are like the same cup. But, like, we could combine. We could just Three cups, you know. <laughs> but, but, you know, often we find ourselves stuck in the things that Jesus came to give us freedom from. You know, it, it, it's easy to be given freedom, but end up back in slavery. Uh, you know, <laughs> you know in, in the desert, it's funny, when you, when you, if you read the book of Exodus, I remember reading it, it's like they, they left slavery in Egypt, they go out in the desert, and they're constantly like, oh, we had it better back in Egypt. I remember the Veggie Tales version. We were enslaved. I forget which vegetable said that. Um, yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. <Anyway. laughs> but, you know, God wants you as, as a believer to live a life of freedom. Uh, you know, Colossians 3 says this Since you have been raised to life, and a new life in Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits in the place of honor God right again. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died in this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. So think about the things in heaven, not on earth. Now, I, again, I like to go mountain biking. And, and one of the funny things about mountain biking is, one, how many times I go over my hand before. But <laughs> two, you know, no, when, you're, when you're mountain biking, the trick is focusing on the right things. Because if you sort of just focus on what's right in front of you, you run into something very large. Sometimes the guy who's right in front of you because you weren't paying attention. You know, it's like you kind of have, it's, 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 have to kind of focus far enough ahead. If you don't focus on the right things, 
you end up off the bike very soon uh, and with bleeding shins like I normally do. <laughs> but you know, and often we end up in slavery because we focus on the wrong things. Uh, now, pandemics, uh, you know, not right by right, 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 fun, but it's this pattern for how God wants us to live our life. You know, and to Jesus, you know, he says, you know, do not murder. Jesus says, hey, don't hate. Uh, you know, yeah, and he talks about, you know, don't commit adultery. Jesus is like, hey, don't even lust. You know, and, and it's not because, you know, <laughs> it, you know, it's because we don't see what God wants for us in a marriage relationship. He says, you know, do not covet, and we, 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 we agree. And, and also we focus on the bad things instead of the good, because it's our nature. Anyway, we have to be reminded not to. Now, apparently that makes some awesome process problems. <laughs> They're like roasted, they're good, you should have, invite her to dinner, have her make Brussels sprouts. And they're like God's candy, I don't know. They're so good. And they're good for me. But, here's the problem. You put the Brussels sprouts next to a pile of Reese's peanut butter cups and bacon. <laughs> Depending on the day, is depending on how Jeff does. Because bacon is good. Maybe not the best for you. <laughs> Reese's peanut butter cups, they're good. That combination of chocolate and peanut butter, unbelievable. You know, the Brussels sprouts are good, but it's hard to focus on the Brussels sprouts when you have there. So you know what I mean. <laughs> and, you know, and so we have to focus on the right things. And so, to put to that, this earth, uh, the sinful earth and nature of the have nothing to do with sexual morality, purity, lust, and desires. Don't be greedy for a greedy person as a doubt or worship of things that world because these sins, the anger of God is coming. We used to do these things when your life was still part of this world, because we were all there. <laughs> but but now it's time to get rid of the anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, dirty language, don't lie to each other, for you have stripped off the old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds. It's a, you know, put to death the sinful earthly thing lurking within you. Uh, you, know, it, it, you know, we have physical desires that God has given us. But, you know, we often go beyond the bounds gave us, the, the, the bounds God has given us. And that's, what, you know, when it's blood, uh, you know, hunger becomes gluttony, intimacy becomes promiscuity, rest becomes laziness. And, and it's easy to give in to the things. You know, and the might, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's all kinds of things. That, you know, but anyway. He said, you used to live in these things. 2 Peter 3, 18 says, grow in the grace of knowledge. Now, it, I love babies. Absolutely adore babies. You know. Love. <laughs> <laughs> if they had like buttons on their backs, I would be present. You know, a little, I wouldn't go to Instagram. with heart buttons on their backs. You know, love babies. We, we love babies here. We, that's why we're trying to get the door for the cry room. <laughs> but, you know, love babies. But it's cute. And even, like, it's funny. You have a baby. They throw up on you and you're like, oh, that's so cute, it's baby vomit. You know, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you didn't care? But like, if a 35 year old is throwing up on you, so it's a whole conversation. <laughs> because you, you expect growth and growing up. And that's because the spiritual life is about growing in your faith, growing up in your faith, uh, you know, becoming who you're supposed to be. Uh, you know, it's not cute when your teenager uh, is, is crying and throwing a tantrum. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, you know, anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, dirty language. Uh, they're all kind of related words in sin. Now, when you're cut off in traffic, there's anger, because the guy cuts you off. There's rage, when you flip out. There's malicious behavior, when you throw golf balls at him. Now, <laughs> but you have to stop that somewhere in that cycle. You know, it was, it was a weird, it was a weird, I went to Walmart, next thing I know, some of you are these guys are trying to get me over, pull over, and fight them. I, I, I don't drive a particularly masculine car, I'm pretty sure this wouldn't have happened when I was in a big truck. <laughs> but it, it, was, it was funny, they were, Josh and I were riding, they, they were trying to get us to pull over and fight, and I'm just thinking, because I can see the size of them, and I'm thinking this is not going as well as you think it is if we do pull over. But, <laughs> but old Jeff wanted to stop. <laughs> New Jeff is like, headlines, local pastor beats high school. It's just not good. <laughs> but you, you have to kind of stop that cycle of rage and anger. 
it would my luck they beat me up, and then it's like local small youths beat large pastor. I don't know. <laughs> never, never goes well, never goes well. But you know, if I want to live like Jesus, I'm not pulling over the car. Because uh, stop that cycle. You know, is it tempting to? But you know, the old chap, there's like 10% chap over there. The old chap that like wants to, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but then, because, the first step, put on your new nature, of the new as you know your creator has come like him. And God wants to live this different way. You know, he wants us to let him go. <laughs> we were singing that the other night. Um, Amy's daughter, we were all having dinner together. We did these dinner things, it was fun. And um, we were, you know, the little, the little microphone, and I'm singing Let It Go, and the piano was, yeah, it was cute. Anyway, so now that song is stuck in my head again. Uh, that and uh, the, the yeah, Hello Darkness line. Uh, yeah, that song is stuck in my head, too. <laughs> Sound of Silence. Someone played that and now it's stuck in the neck. Someone sent it to me again this morning, Bob. <laughs> Some people get like, it's a small world stuck in their head. I get Sound of Silence. Like, sure. uh, I think that's the best version anyway. Uh, but here's it. Uh, you know, we have to let it go. You know, because that's part of what it means to live in freedom in Christ. So, in passage, there's sanctification, you know, we, we have salvation, there's deliverance, we have freedom. I don't have to pull over the car. And then, then there's this redemption, there's restoration. Uh, you, know, you know, Ephesians 2, 8 says, But God saved you by his grace, and we believe you can't take credit for this. It's because salvation is not a reward for the good things uh, we have done, so that none of us can boast about the glory of God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things that his plan for us long ago. And, and there's, uh, you know, this idea of masterpiece, uh, and this is another one of those verses that I talk about a lot, because the, the, other, the New Testament is originally written in Greek, and this is one of those cool Greek words. There's, like, it, it's the word poema. Now, some of you, we get the word poem from that. And what is a poem? Heard words. And, you know, it, it's like a masterpiece. The idea is we are God's masterpiece. Uh, and so we, he, God takes this broken, kind of messed up stuff, it creates a masterpiece out of it. Now, some of you grew up here at Blue Men Mall. The chicken. Some of you know what I mean. The big chicken. It's, a, it's this chicken mosaic. It's all these broken things that someone put together. And someone will post it later because you know, I think Justin's posted the picture before. You can still go to Blue Men Mall and see this giant chicken thing. But I loved the chicken as a kid. as the blue hen. And it, it, you'll have, it, but a mosaic is all these broken pieces put together pretty picture. And that's what God does. God takes our brokenness, our scars, our messed upness, and he, he creates this work of art with it. And so we are God's work of art. We are his poema. Uh, you know, and, and that God has created us to do good things. And this is where, uh, some of this, you know, kind of stuff. I love, you know, classic cars. And uh, some of you have seen, oh, uh, my Mustang is a little bit of work. <laughs> but, but, you know, I, I, I an old Mustang. I had, well, we've had since it was made in 66, and we're working on it right now, so it's not in the best shape. But when I get it done, if I ever get it done, it's just too, too hot to park in the summer. <laughs> but, but you know, when I get it done, what am I going to do? Drive it, not look at it. <laughs> I can't stand when people restore a car and never drive it. Ferris Bueller, stay off, you know, the car, I don't have miles on it. I know he doesn't watch that movie. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's bad because I, I watch movies again that I used to watch a long time ago. And then you're like, oh my gosh, can't get that scene in there. So I don't know if I'm recommending the movie or not. But point being, cars are meant to be driven. It's, if you want to restore a car, keep the garage great. But if I restore a car, I'm going to drive it. And, and, and God, He's created us, He's recreated us, and we have stuff to do. Again, and that's where there's this tension because we're not saved, we're not made right with God by what we do. But when we're right with God, we'll live differently. And we have cool stuff that, that God has us do. Uh, now, you know, we often see things through the rearview mirror, give me a car analogy here, by what we've done, where we failed, but we need to look through the windshield. So God may use your past, but his plans are ultimately for your future. And God has things. Now, David, if you read the guy who studied that David said, you're like, why are we talking about David? <laughs> Biblical David. Yeah. We start off with, David has an affair! <laughs> it's like, 
That's like my last Sunday here for sure. <laughs> no, different day. <laughs> but David, you know, real screwed up. He did. But, but God still used it. And he still did. You know, and, and Paul, Paul, you know, writes a big chunk of the, the, the New Testament. I mean, he starts off like overseeing the killing of Christians. Like you're like, yeah, that's that's pretty much that's gonna make your resume, right? You know, like you write a resume, write all the accomplishments that you've done. I stood over and watched the first Christian martyr. You know, <laughs> that's a great resume for the Antichrist. Not so much for you know, but, but you know, Paul screws up, he still gets used. I, I like Peter because Peter often says and does the wrong things, you know. All these little things, you know. You know, Peter's like, he says the good thing, the next thing you know, Jesus is like, get behind me, Satan. You know, they, they come to arrest him. Peter's like, let me chop off his ear. You know, and then Jesus has to heal somebody, has to be arrested. You know, <laughs> and then Peter denies him a bunch of times. Peter's upset, goes back, Jesus restores him and uses him. And so, you know, <laughs> you know, God ultimately uses it. So Passover, sanctification, which is like salvation. God brings us out. There, you know, it deliverance, freedom, redemption, restoration, and then you know, it's, it, we, we live then a, a life of, a, of praise. We live as the people of God. We we become His people. Uh, you know, uh, Romans twelve one. You know, again, I I think I've said this the way I want to say it. You know, we live differently because of who we are. Now, it doesn't mean you're not going to mess up. It doesn't mean you're not going to have a bad day. It doesn't mean you have to never wear jeans or wear certain kinds of skirts or thin you know, buns in your hair. I don't know. <laughs> like, I, in some churches, like, you can't wear makeup at church, but you can wear it during the week. I'm like, that's weird. <laughs> uh, I don't wear, you know. <laughs> anyway, so I've had people think, you know, we, we, we dishonor God by bringing coffee in the sanctuary. Sorry, we have then. <laughs> we will clean the carpet. Uh, anyway, some of you need the coffee to stay away from the sun. It's a Romans 12, 1. Uh, New Living Translation says this. Uh, and so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because you've always done. You let them be living a holy sacrifice, the kind you will find acceptable. That is the tr truly way we work to worship. Don't copy the behavior and customs of the world. But let God transform you to a new person to change the way you think. Then you learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Now, I want to read it from the message. Uh, because I, I like message is a good translation, but it, it's a paraphrase, but I like how it puts this guy. I think it, it kind of makes it clear what you're actually supposed to do. Because some Bible verses you're like, okay, I understand what it's saying, but what do I actually do with that? And this is one of them. So, it's in Romans 12. So, here's what I want you to do. God helping you take your everyday, ordinary life. You're sleeping, eating, going to work, walking around life, and placing it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for Him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention to God. He'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what He wants you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of maturity. God brings out the best thing you can help you well form maturity. Um, you know, God has created us to live an extraordinary life. You know, it's you ever watch movies? Again, another thing people say you can't do in the church is I'm not that guy. Uh, there's some movies you watch in the box, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but you know, like, there's never a movie about a guy buying a 5,000 square foot house. Now, you know, it's about or the counter offer, you know. <laughs> now, if you have 5,000 square foot house, don't care. <laughs> well, actually, you might be a barbecue. But, <laughs> but you, know, you know, we love movies about kind of like people who've lived through challenging things, people who've done great things. Like, I think we're all kind of looking for heroes. And, you know, we like Rocky movies because, you know, well, it's especially a lot of women like a lot of Rocky movies. <laughs> uh, you know, but, but, you know, we want things that inspire us to, you know, and that's the kind of life we want to live. We want to live this life of praise, this, this exciting life. Not just, you know, boring, I went to church on Sunday, lived however I want throughout the week. It, there's, it, living for God is an exciting life. Uh, now, it's also, I mean, we talked about this, we talked about it's a life of service. John 13, Jesus, Last Supper, portion B. You know, it was like the loneliness of love. Jesus serves. 
uh, you know, if it's a little life crisis, you know, I, mean, I think we need to really connect with the people. That's what God, you know, to, to be God's people means we're God's people together. Community's hard. You know why community's hard? Because you're in it. <laughs> uh, and I said, well, because community's hard because of all the people. Like, you know, real community means you are in relationships with people who don't look like you, who don't act like you, who annoy you sometimes. Uh, but, but you know, ultimately the people got is a whole bunch of different people. It, it, it's a rainbow of people, uh, not just color-wise, but all kinds of other behaviors and weirdness. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 12, says the body has many parts, but many parts make up one body. So there's a body of Christ, some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves, some are free. We all that back to one body, and one spirit, we all share the same spirit. And, and, you know, and Paul continues, he talks about, you know, there's many parts to the body, and they're not all the same. Uh, you know, like, you can't rebuild a Mustang with ten engines and no tires. Because you would have just a pile of ten engines and no tires. You know, you, you, you can't. You, you know, yeah, and, and cats break down to eighty nine, but you don't need ten of them. <laughs> you know, there's different parts, different function. I like Lego. You know, it's interesting. They're trying to read Lego to have less plastic in it, which I uh, just read an article. I know, like, how do you think plastic? Can be less plastic. You know? I mean, they're just trying to figure out how do you become environmental. Anyway, I have real Lego, so it's not really waste. You know, I, mean, <laughs> I have a ton of Legos. Uh, that's why you have children, uh, you know, because you're like, I want to play with Legos still, and it's awkward if you're, and still play with Legos, uh, so you have kids. And, but, you know, you buy the little kit, uh, it would, you know, because you can go to, like, the Lego store at the mall, and you buy like, fill the bin of stuff, and, you know, I get all kinds of cool pieces. Anyway, but you don't go to the Lego, you wouldn't go buy a kit, and it's all those, those, those weird square tiles. Like, they're not fun, there's no pile of tiles. Like, by a kit, it's all got all the different pieces and it built something cool when you're done, like a Batmobile, <laughs> you know, Lego Death Star or something. Um, it wouldn't be fun. And that's, God's created us all different. Some of the things that cause us friction and frustration, some of the things that cause us friction and frustration in marriage are because we're different. We marry someone who's different than us, and then we want to kill them because they're different than us. <laughs> it's coming, don't worry, guys. <laughs> but you'll, you'll, you'll figure it out. You've got great marriage. Uh, but, you know, uh, you know. Anyway, being with the body, being God's people, means living this life differently. So that there's sanctification, there's salvation. God brought us out of Egypt. There's new life. Uh, you know, there's deliverance, there's freedom, there's redemption, there's restoration. And there's this, this life of praise, this living the new life. Now, have you ever seen again back to movies, the next museum? Movie, right? Uh, and they're dead, and they need something to bring them back to life. Uh, <laughs> you know, here's the thing. If you haven't put your trust and faith in Christ, you need him to give you life. And, and, you know, we go from death to life. We go from slavery to stuff to sonship. We go from heavy burdens to light burdens. Uh, we go from, like, a yoke we can barely move to living how God's created us to be. That's what faith in Christ does. Now, if you put your faith in him, here's the thing. Remember the joy when you first believed. The longer you live this Christian life, sometimes the harder it is to remember. You lose the joy. The, 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 there's just like, there's just this fun phase in life. I remember when I was a new believer, I was like reading the Bible every day, all the day. You know, I was like, oh man, this is part of the book. You know, there's it's so much joy. You're, you're going to every Bible study you ever was. Then you get to a certain point in life, you're like, oh my God, I'm going to Bible study. Yeah, it, it, it's easy to, to kind of say that. Uh, but, so remember the joy, you know, and then all, you know, live the way, you know, God's calls live. Find your purpose. When you find the way you're you're created to live, when you find the things that God's created to do, they'll bring you joy. They'll bring you satisfaction. You'll, you'll be excited about your faith again. Uh, uh, you know. And ultimately, faith that affects everything in the way we live. Faith affects the way we treat our spouse. That's a hard one sometimes. I mean, you guys are thinking I have marital problems. I'm just being real. <laughs> you know, you know, faith affects the way you treat your parents. Faith affects the way you, you act in school, the way you're a student, the, the, the way you interact with other people. Uh, it should have every aspect. Now, here's the thing. When we talk in certain circles in the Christian church, we talk about 
I'm saved and going to heaven, right? Does anyone go to church and emphasize that? That's good. It's good to be right with God. Don't get me wrong. But I think if you go saved and going to heaven, it misses out on this whole part in the middle. Unless you're like on your deathbed dying, saved and going to heaven, there's a whole lot of span in there. <laughs> and there's a lot of things. You know, faith should affect the way we live. Faith affects the way uh, we get. It's not just about escaping the penalty of sin, but it's about living this new life, this better life here. Uh, a faith that saves you will change you. And, you know, <laughs> uh, it, it changes the way we live. It changes what we post on Facebook. It changes what, how we interact with others on Twitter. Uh, you know, it, it changes, you know, how we live. Uh, you know, here's the thing. If you live in freedom, you, you, we get to be transformed. You know, and the gospel's meant to be life-changing. So don't go back into slavery. We don't have to live the old life we used to. We don't have to be sucked into the, the old stuff we, we were. God has given us new life. He's given us freedom. Uh, as the band comes back to play, 